third step is the selection of GMPs. So, GMP is actually a relationship which relates the hazard parameter of interest with the source to site distance. So, you select it from the available literature, but you select it based on whether you lie on a stable continental region or an active tectonic region or you lie in a subduction zone. So, based on your seismotectonic environment, you select a GMP. So, it is not that you can use any GMP, you have to justify its use, which should really be able to tell the rate of attenuation of seismic waves in your seismotectonic environment. So, they look like this graphically that they relate this R distance with the PGA number or SS or S1 or any other spectral acceleration. In general, the line goes down with R increasing, but there will be a different line for different magnitude. right? So, you use these equations to predict the number at your site. These are the classification of major tectonic regions in the world. Uh, they are either the stable continental region and then they can be sub, there can be subduction zone, there can be uh, the active tectonic regions. So, these three are the main regions. The GMP which is developed for subduction zones is not ap applicable for active tectonic region. right? Similarly, the stable region will have a different GMP. So, depending upon which environment you live in for which you are doing PSHA, you select a GMP. So, this is itself a detailed topic, uh, the justification for the selection of GMPs and what should be considered in that their selection, but more importantly seismotectonic environment. So, in this figure the active regions of the world are shown by different shade, subduction zone are shown by different line these uh, triangular points are actually the subduction areas. And then stable continental regions, if your study area lies on one plate, no faults and it is a stable region, then a different GMP is applicable. right? So, for east coast of US, different GMP is applicable, for west coast, different GMP is applicable. In Pakistan, northern region, different GMP is applicable. Southern Makran subduction zone, different GMP, Koita transfer zone, different GMP, right? So, we select based on those things. So, this is just one classification list of selected attenuation relations in one of the studies. So, for uh, Western North America, these are the GMPs, they are named after the researchers which they which develop them, right? So, Abrahamson and Silva is, a, is the name of a model, is a name of an equation. Right, but that equation is very complex. I will show you one template. Similarly, Campbell, Atkinson, and Boer, very famous. Sometimes one group of researcher propose an GMP, but then later on, after a few years, they get more data and they improve that GMP. Right. So next version of GMPs also uh, are available. Now sometimes different international organizations develop standardized GMPs. Which are, you, which are made as a part of some big project and then they are more comprehensive. So, different international organizations also propose for example, NGA, next generation attenuation of Pacific earthquake engineering research, they have a set of GMPs which they update after every few years. Typical GMP nowadays is of this form, log of y, y is any ground motion parameter, it can be PGA, SS, S1 or any other spectral acceleration at any other time. Some coefficient C 1 up till C 6 or C 10 whatever. Magnitude is main input, source to side distance is main input in different terms, faulting mechanism and site class and then this is that error term. right? So, uh, now the coefficient C 1 up till C 6 in this particular example, they depend on what is the y value? If y is your PGA, if you are predicting PGA, then C 1 to C 6 is a different set of coefficients. If y is spectral acceleration at point 0.1 second for example, then C 1 to C 6 is a different set of coefficient. Right? So, similarly, f is a faulting mechanism coefficient and the 
whenever this equation is proposed, there are detailed tables with it, which are telling us what is C 1 to C 6 for different G, uh, hazard parameters and then what should be the value of f if you have a strike slip fault, what should be the value f if you have a thrust fault or normal fault. Similarly, s what should be the value of f s if you have a site class uh, c or d or e for example. right? So, for different magnitudes you can plot different lines. Let me skip all that this is an example of what should be the value of f in different GMPs for different types of fault. right? So, for strike slip f should be 0, for reverse oblique f should be 0.5. Similarly, s also in some of the tables you will find guidelines about what should be the value of s. One important thing which you, you should consider while using a GMP and by the way for the NGA GMPs there are excel sheets available you can go to their website download that and you do not need to code that equation yourself. Because the coefficient table which come with a particular GMP they look like this let me show you this this table. So, it is telling you that if you have a PGA as your main predicting hazard parameter these this whole row tells you what should be the coefficients C 1 to C 14 in this particular GMP there were 14 coefficients. right? If you want to predict spectral acceleration at 0.05 seconds, you use second row of coefficients. right? Similarly, you go up to 7.5, which means that by just applying this GMP, you can plot the response spectrum of your site. You can uh, predict PGA and spectral acceleration at any time period, finally you can make a response spectrum. This thing which I was explaining that the source to site distance definition may be different depending upon the GMP to GMP. right? Some GMPs may define the source to site distance r as uh, the distance from epicenter to your station. This is denoted by m 2 here. Some GMPs may say that it should be the distance from hypocenter to your site it is denoted as m 1. Right? So, you should understand what is the definition of source to site distance in that GMP before using that. Right? What is the R defined in that? Some may say that uh, if the rupture start from a particular uh, location obviously, that will be a hypocenter, but uh, the rupture is this whole area which is enclosed by this rough line this is the whole rupture. Some may say that the closest distance from that rupture to your site m 4 should be the source to site distance. Some others may say that if you project that rupture area on the surface and the closest point on the surface from your station m 5 should be the should be the source to site distance. And lastly, some may say that in that whole rupture zone there can be a location where the most energy is concentrated and if it is denoted by this particular zone, the center of that zone up till the station should be the real representative of source, source to site distance. right? So, there can be different definitions of source to site. Generally, in the peer ground motion database, there are two common source to site distance definitions. One is called R rupture, R rup and second is called R J B, R joiner boor. Uh, by on the name of those researchers. R rupture is exactly the distance from the hypocenter to your site. right? But R J B has a slightly different definition. I will explain it somewhere or it is already explained in some of my earlier lectures. So, please check that one. So, but at least you should know these two source to site distances. So, I will skip all that detail. This is I already explained that currently the GMPs are long expressions with a lot of coefficients. This is a data set how the data look uh, set looks like which is used to construct a GMP. Obviously, you can guess that you need to have many earthquake records their PGA values and SS and S 1 values 
at different distances for different earthquakes and then you can propose one GMP out of that. right? So, this is an example of different GMP models comparison of them. <coughs> 